Thank you, Father Kelly, Reverend Fathers, any honored guests, and last of all, my brothers. Firstly, I just want to say I'm honored to be able to tell you my vocation story on not only the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, but the first day of the Year of Mercy. I have red on for mercy and white, but I don't have any blue on, so I'd like to start with a Hail Mary. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It's my vocation story. I've been a cradle Catholic, Catholic since I was baptized, and coming from a family of four. And practicing the faith in my family has just always been something we've done. Going to Mass every Sunday as long as, I've, as long as I can remember. But the weird part about that was after Mass, oftentimes, people would come up to me, people I didn't know, be like, have you ever thought about being a priest? I was like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> but many times, I'd often thought, no, that couldn't be for me. I'm going to grow up and get married. Little did I know what the Lord had. So coming into my freshman year, I went on this retreat, offered at my parish for high school students, thankfully, including incoming freshmen. And I can still remember coming out of that retreat, having met Christ in such a profound way that, like, I was thinking, I don't want to just be Catholic, like, in name. I don't want to just go to Mass every Sunday. I want to make this my identity. I want to make being a Catholic who I am, a part of my life, a part of my heart. No words seemed to, to adequate to describe what happened over the weekend, what brought me to that point. And that's when priesthood first entered my mind. I didn't kind of, I kind of brushed it off. Like, the Lord was, what do you think about this? And I was kind of like, not right now. Give me a little bit of time. But later that year, I fell away from my faith. As I said a few weeks ago, I started dating that girl on and off again. And after time number three, <laughs> um, I just kind of went back to that retreat. And I thought, all right, Lord, like, I've invested so much of myself into this relationship with this girl that I'm really, I was finding my identity in her instead. I should have been finding it in you. So I'll make you a deal, Father. I give you everything that I am, all my time, all my energy that I've been giving to this girl. And you can do whatever you wish with me, as long as you heal me of all the brokenness I've kind of gotten myself into from that relationship. And the Lord was like, that's fine. You're healed. But I want you to be a priest. And I was like, Lord, that right now, me? Nah. But, but I said, a deal's a deal. So I jumped back in to the parish life, and I immersed myself in youth ministry. Any talk at the parish, any event, I was planning a lot of youth ministry stuff. But I still was kind of 50-50 on the priesthood. I wasn't really sure. But later on, junior year, Codus Tuus came to my parish. And ironically enough, as I would later be on one, it was an all-seminarian team. <laughs> and one of the seminarians named Sam Andrew from the Diocese of Peoria gets up and says, there's only one prayer you ever need to pray. Well, he's a seminarian. So he must be really holy and know what he's talking about. <laughs> right. Right. So I listened. He said, the only prayer you ever need to pray is, Lord, help me to want to be who you want me to be. I thought, well... I don't really want to be a priest, but I'm pretty sure the Lord is calling me to his priesthood. So I should probably start praying that prayer. And so I did. And the Holy Spirit used that. The Holy Spirit lit and fanned the desire for priesthood in my heart into a consistent flame as I continued to pray this prayer. And the desires for priesthood just like sprung up. It just came out of nowhere. I found myself wanting to like, getting excited about going to the hospital at 3 in the morning to anoint someone on their deathbed. I was like, that can't be from anyone but the Lord. And I found myself getting excited at the thought of marrying the people, burying the people, baptizing kids, being the instrument of mercy of the Lord in the confessional, and most of all, watching bread turn into God in my very hands. So, junior year, I started going to Mass every day. And then senior year, I started saying the rosary every day. And I got a theory that if you do either daily mass or a daily rosary, and you're supposed to end up in seminary, either you're going to stop doing that or you're going to end up in seminary. It's my theory. So here I am. And it's been such a ride, brothers. Man. It hasn't been easy, but it's been so good. 
this place and everyone in it has stretched me in ways I never would have imagined, but I'm so grateful for that. And specifically for you brothers, and especially for the priests, because you guys have helped me and inspired me with your love for prayer, your intentionality, and your joy. It's so edifying for me to witness how you guys love each other and love the Lord. To be honest, you guys make me want to be a saint, and that's awesome. So, one day, God willing, I won't call you my brothers because we're in the same seminary, because we're in the same building. I'll get to call you my brothers because we'll share in the same priesthood of Jesus Christ. And I look forward to that day that I will get to serve alongside you, and we get to fight together in the battle of the salvation for souls, bringing the love of the heart of Jesus to the rest of the world. Praise be Jesus.